Good evening. Welcome to the August 21st, 2017 regularly scheduled meeting of the Midland Public Schools Board of Education. At this time, if everyone would please turn off their cell phones so that we don't have interference with our TV feed, I would appreciate it. And then if you would all stand and join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Hey, Pam, if you could call the roll, please. Absolutely. President Brandstadt? Here. Vice President Singer? Here. Secretary McFarland? Could not make it. Treasurer Frizee? Here. Member Baker? Here. Member Blazy? Here. Member Friedel? Here. All right, six out of seven. All right, moving into item two, which is our consent agenda. 2.1 is approval of the regular meeting minutes from our July 17th, 2017 meeting and also the minutes from our special meeting on August 8th. 2.2 are the following persons who are recommended for employment for the 2017-18 school year. 2.3 are the following staff members who have announced their resignations with the effective dates noted. 2.4 is the paper bid for the year. And 2.5 is the approval of the payment of the school system's bills for the month of June. All right. This time, I will take a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move to approve the consent agenda, items 2.1 through 2.5. Support. Moved by Pam, supported by Mary. This time, is there any discussion? Yeah, Angela, I'll mention um, okay. this is our first batch of hiring. You get, we'll, we'll be doing some catching up at the next board meeting. Okay. Remind you how that always works, you know. Right. With some that we're, we're going to hire and get in the classrooms, obviously. Excellent. Or have been hired in the last four or five days. Okay. And we're not in this one. And we have one of those here today. So we have one of our first new, new teachers. Do you want to say your name and introduce yourself? Hi, my name is Erica Nikolai. I graduated from Saginaw Valley State University. Loved every minute of it, so I'm really excited. Excellent. Hi, nice. welcome. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So this is the first batch more to come okay. on that one. Excellent. Any other discussion? I see Missy DeBoer uh, is leaving us. I hear she's going to Northwood. Um, oh. she, uh, we'll miss her. Lynn and I went a few times to Lansing, and when she received a special um, uh, MASB excellence award. MASB, score. yeah. And uh, so she'll be missed. Yes, huge loss in the classroom. Mm -hmm. Exceptional, exceptional teacher. We will miss her. All right, any other discussion? All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed? All right, moving into item three, Board of Education Matters presentation to the board 3.1 is our United for Success presentation. Yes, I'm not sure who's gonna start again. We have Ann Fillmore <coughs> from that away here. And if you recall, um, I think last year we started the conversation um, about partnering with United Way with a little bit of help from our friends at Dow on how to better do our volunteers in our school. And when I say better, that's a big parameter of things I think we're working on. And I'll let you guys explain it all. Right? Yes. yes. All right, well, thank you. And we were here by invitation by Superintendent Cheryl. Yeah, Thanks. turn on the So what we wanted to do tonight, and we appreciate having the venue to do so, is to let you know the progress that we've made to date. And as Mike had alluded to, um, you know, we had asked for a wish list early on on how to partner with the community. And we honed in on volunteer management. And so in November, we had met with um, Cynthia and Bob and Mike to really see what your needs are around volunteer management. And um, soon after we, we did that, we, we both were excited to know what United Way could bring to the table and what your needs were. And um, we went to Dow because we've partnered with Dow um, for the past seven years in providing their volunteer management to their 6,000 plus employees. And knowing that they're a leader in volunteer engagement and employee engagement, we said, would you like to be a partner in this? And immediately Rob Valentine, who couldn't be here tonight, he sends his regrets, said, I'm in. Let us know how we can help. 
And so from there, what we did is looked at building out this partnership. And if you look at this, um, we, we kind of did an assessment to see what, what the needs are. And um, they, were, they were pretty extensive as far as um, volunteer engagement. Um, you have very diverse volunteer needs. Um, they're episodic, they're ongoing, you have classroom, you have athletics, you have concessions. Um, before, during, and after school, you have a need for traditional and for skilled volunteers. Um, and then throw in Central Park and all of the volunteer needs there. Um, training development was a need. Volunteer background checks. Um, engaging the community. How do we bring the community into Midland Public so they're really a part of your school district? And then we looked at what could United Way bring to the partnership. And we have many resources and partners that we can leverage. We have a student United Way. We manage all of the volunteer services on campus at Northwood University. We have Dow and Dow Corning where we manage all of their volunteers. So we have access to those employees. We have our retiree base and, um, and how can we engage them. We, we convene, we meet with companies, individuals, and we have the traditional volunteers and we have the skilled volunteers. So what we needed to do is look at how do we develop a database so we can uh, align and assess skill sets. Looking at a very comprehensive volunteer management system and then connecting to community impact. So why, why do we do this? Why do we have volunteers in? What's that impact? What's the return on investment? And then if you bring in Dow into this picture, they have their 2025 sustainability goals where they look at building the future workforce, innovative solutions, sustainable communities. And then their resources, they're offering financial support and um, employee support. They have the traditional and the skilled volunteers. And then we also are working on a very comprehensive um, community impact collaborative with them. So how do we replicate what we've done in Midland to um, other areas in the nation and also internationally? And then working closely with the STEM ambassadors. We also have a STEM ambassador volunteer manager at Dow in addition to a corporate volunteer manager that, that we're kind of melding all of this together then. So, and all of you have an overview sheet in front of you, I believe. And if you look at that, this is just kind of an introduction to the partnership, what the partnership involves, and um, looking at United Way, too, as the recognized leader in bringing volunteers and organizations together to create a better life. And what we wanted to do is, is help you build capacity with your own staff. So how can you do this, but do it um, more efficiently and smarter with the resources that you have? And um, so you can see there are the goals. I won't go over all of them, but you know, how do we help support your mission? Um, how do we enhance the children's learning opportunities, increase community involvement in your school, which is very important, and strengthen your community school relationships and understanding? And um, I want to say kudos to Mike for his leadership in seeing a need and knowing how to leverage community resources to do that and really um, using your resources in a much smarter, more efficient way. And so what I want to do is introduce Renee Erlab, who's your volunteer manager here at Midland Public Schools, and she'll kind of um, give you a full report on where we are today. Uh, when we started off, I started in uh, May of this year, May 1st. My first part of the job was to do a volunteer assessment across the district among the teachers. So we uh, came up with a survey, put it out to the 400 plus teachers, heard back from just over 100 of them, which was helpful. So we've got some information to share. Um, the biggest thing that they need to volunteers help in is with class projects, centers, and speakers. And class projects meaning just like maybe the lighthouses that they do in some of the great schools or centers for maybe the kindergarten. And then guest speakers really working into middle school and high school and why should I care about global geography? Well, this is why, because this is my job and this is what I do. So to try to pull speakers in to pull that piece together. Um, the academic intervention was mostly on reading and math, which is something that we always need to work on continually, and then help in the classroom. So those being a couple of the two top ones, and of course, those are the top five. Uh, top comments uh, range from you know having the online volunteer application, hoping to streamline the whole thing and speed up the processing, which we've been able to do. Uh, so the teachers can know a little bit sooner than later who is approved to be in their classrooms or to drive or to be on a field trip. So that's something that they also wanted. And to know the, um, to determine where the volunteers can help out. 
So to know who's available, when they're available, and how they can help you. So that was part of that. And, and when we did the survey too, most of the answers were very um, in the middle. And I think it's maybe, well, some of them had said that they were unaware that volunteers were even available to them. So hopefully, we're going to change that. That's the goal. Um, I did meet with all of the principals and most of the administrative assistants in all of the buildings. So I went and just kind of stormed in and <laughs> said, do you have a few minutes? Not storming, but I asked for a few minutes. And we sat down and had a nice conversation, which was really good. And one of the things I learned the most was that the middle schools actually need more help than I think most people are aware of. Um, with just to have people in the building, to have other adults there, to have adults in the hallways, to have adults to talk to about books. So in the sense of a reading buddy, that would typically in elementary school would have been someone to teach you how to read and help you learn how to read. This, in a sense, would be uh, partnering with a kid to hear them talk about their book and the excitement of the book and to show an interest in their book or maybe even have a small book club. So that's where the reading need is at that level and even into high school. Um, of course, we have a need for mentors across the board now with the PYP program. All those fifth grade classes have at least six or seven volunteers or mentors per classroom. And then, of course, you have several fifth grades in each school. So that's a large need of mentors that are that will have the PADS program being the new program. And then, of course, robotics growing constantly. So that's a big need there for volunteers. Um, before was what some of the principals expressed is they felt that the, the volunteers weren't activated, that they would say, you know, this is what I can do for your school, but then really nothing followed up with that. So that's what we're hoping to change. And it's a volume thing, too. I mean, there's a lot of people. So that's what I'm hoping to do is have activation of the volunteers overall because it takes all of us to have those 21st century responsible, you know, contributing adults of America. So hopefully we get more people around to help out with all of that. This is a little bit of a timeline. Uh, June 14th is when I physically went into all those buildings and removed paper that said Bravo on it, um, and then asked for anything else to be removed that might say that on there. And then, of course, added United for Success. We went live with the program on July 12th. And then um, we're into training people now and having that web program available to everyone. So that'll be very nice. This is what a volunteer sees when they fill out the application. And Lynn's familiar with this because she had just applied recently. Um, so this is what a volunteer will see. They will be able to look at the handbook. They will be able to look at the levels and really decide which level they qualify for um, because the levels have different kinds of um, needs as far as screening goes. So this is what they'll see there. Um, once they choose an application, they fill out the parts that they need to, uh, their name and all that kind of stuff. They consent to a background check and their electronic signature and then it goes from there to me to process from there. And then when they want to go back into their their profile, they will go to the volunteer portal. So they can still visit that page and click on the volunteer portal. Um, this is my part of it. This is like a dashboard just to kind of keep me up on the status and provide some data for me. Um, and this changes every day. These uh, numbers are actually already uh, grown quite a bit <laughs> since the other day. This is my favorite slide. This is where I say the magic happens. <laughs> This is the overall uh, management and activation of volunteers. So this is really cool, this part. This is uh, before we kind of knew what people, when they might be available, we, but we didn't really know what they could do for us. Um, but now we have our four W's answered. We have our who can do and what they can do and where they can do that and when they're available. So we're answering those four W's, which is great. That will be very helpful. And one of the things, you know, I um, looked at some of these, I thought, even though People had put down one school on some of these. Um, we have one guy, John Tarrant, who you know put down that he would be a dance chaperone with Woodcrest Elementary. Well, I know that Steve Poole had mentioned that you know we don't get enough dance dance chaperones at the high school, and that's probably because high school parents are asked not to go by their child, <laughs> which I can completely understand. So maybe you know I call up John and we see if he can volunteer. And most people who volunteer generally will volunteer when asked if there's a need for them. So hopefully that's how we can make use of that. Um, this is what the schools will see for driving documents. This is something over the years. It was always paper that was turned in, that was copied. You put your license and your driver's let your uh, proof of insurance and vehicle registration and you copy that and turned it in. And if you had a kid at Midland High and a kid at Northeast, you were turning papers in both places. And nobody knew if you had a paper somewhere else and then if there was a last minute driving. Now, you'll, now the volunteers will be able to upload those items separately with their expiration dates and then over time they will update them. So when they expire, that's when they update that item, not the entire thing, because they're filling out the application once, they're putting these things in once, and they will update them as needed. But this way too, 
wherever that parent is that needs to drive, we can find out that if they're, they're approved and they're vetted to drive and everything is in. This is a few numbers for you. Um, last year at this time, there were 225 volunteers vetted and a th over 1,000 that were vetted by the end of September and a total of almost 3,000 by the end of the school year. So we have a vast amount of volunteers, which is fantastic. Um, at this point now, too, we are actually up to 684 volunteers vetted as of this morning. And then um, we are almost at 900 for registered. I actually predicted that number when I turned this in uh, at 700 because I thought, okay, we'll get to 700 by Monday. I'm almost at 900 today. <laughs> so I think that's pretty exciting. The volunteers range in age, and that was, I was put that on there mostly so you could see that we have an ease of use. We have um, a young, you know, Kayla Brown, she's 19. She volunteered because that's what her family does. She put herself in there. And then we have a guy named Roger Briggs who's 88 and he's in there too. So it can be used by everyone. Uh, we, I created a new handbook which has all the, the good parts that we had before and it's a little bit streamlined, a little bit more efficient, gets to the point of what we need. We still have in there um, volunteer tips, expecta expectations, a code of ethics. This is it right here, so you can see that. So all the schools mm -hmm. will have that in there. Of course, you can see it online as well. Um, I've met, I, I've talked with a lot of people, uh, different volunteers, lead volunteers, uh, parent, team parents that are like a team mom or team dad for whatever teams it might be. Um, in clubs as well. So I've reached out to a lot of them to see how we can make this all work better. I just came from the uh, Dow High Booster Club meeting. I'm going to be at the Midland High one next week. I'm going to a music one, I think, on Thursday. I can't remember which high school it's at, but I'm going to one of them. Um, just to make sure it's out there, be able to talk to the parents, let them know that it's here, and please sign up. Um, and I've had active communication with uh, all the principals, the administrative assistants, and then as many people as I can reach out to. And of course, I have taken advantage of all the free opportunities I can to advertise this. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we have luckily used that communique, the Twitter messages that go out, the, the web page, um, the quarterly news, the United Way Volunteer Voice is a radio spot. And um, we talked about doing a TV spot now too, so we'll figure out something with that and that will be pretty cool. And then um, a lot of the schools have their own Facebook pages for various things. Like I know the music boosters do at Midland High, so I know that they put information about United for Success on that as well. Um, besides the presentations, I'll be at different schools for various things with a table set up that will say this is, you know, United for Success, volunteers can sign up. I have been um, blessed with a few Chromebooks to be able to use and to have those at those events. I'll be at Northeast when they have their schedule pickup and I'll have three uh, Chromebooks there. So if there's someone there that does not have a computer or does not have web access, they can still sign up. I'll have it right there, they can sign up, they can call me if they need to, I'll have a card out there, it's an information card. This is a little information card that can be handed to anybody coming by that wants to know how to sign up. So they can get signed up and we can get as many people as we can in there, which will be pretty awesome. Um, and I just added too, just the other day, yesterday in fact, I just added, um, there's an event uh, at Dow called Grow University, so I'll be doing a volunteer presentation table there as well, and that has about, I guess, up to 90 retirees that come through that look for volunteer opportunities, so that will be pretty nice. And this whole thing is a work in progress. It's new. It's just a baby right now, so any uh, feedback, any constructive uh, ideas will be welcomed and valued, so feel free to send those my way when you want to. Thank you. Thank you. Can we ask a question? Yeah, I was going to say, Yes, well. you can ask me questions. Sorry. Do you have a question? Yeah, I do. I do. <laughs> so, so if I, 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 that's all I want to know. I'm done. Um, if I volunteer and, and I put my information out here, how do I know um, if there's a need or or do you, do you give me a phone call? Do I get an email? How, how, um, well, right now, when you put yourself in there, um, there is an opportunity to check off things that you're interested in. So that, will, that list shows the needs among the district overall. So hopefully you're checking off things that you would be interested in helping in. And then as we work through this, if I get a phone call from um, Dirk DeBoer who says, you know, I need hallway heroes, Renee, do you have anyone that's decided to be a hallway hero? I can filter a list down to have a group of people with their contact information who are willing to be hallway heroes. 
same thing goes with any you know any of the jobs that I have on there so some people will have a request for a particular school but some people have put down five schools on there so they're just people that just want to volunteer and help out but I can filter those different activities I have over 20 activities so any one of those activities I can filter out the people that are interested in helping in that and that specific thing and then do you send their name email and phone number on to say Dirk DeBoer and yes I can them? yeah um, I can either cr um, create a contact list for him or I can call it for him I can send it to him um, however it's gonna work best at the time when it's needed I mean obviously I can make those phone calls too, and emails and whatever however we need to make that work but it will be available either way like either you know the administrative assistant can pull it up and pull up a document that shows all the people interested in that particular thing with their contact information I can do the same thing and hope to be able to do that I mean that's I hope that they all use me and that's what I'm trying to get out there please call me let me help you with this I'm I'm the manager of the volunteers so let me let me do that job for you right and you mentioned training what does that look like the training for volunteers right it will depend on what they want to do um, a lot of times the particular teachers will have a certain way if they have a reading buddy um, and then when I talked to um, mr. Poole, it was about the uh, dance chaperone I don't know a lot of training in that but he'll obviously he would talk to the people that would be the dance right. show ahead of time so any kind of training that needs I was to be just done. gonna say I can think of some training <laughs> yeah so there's there's a range there and anything that we feel like we need more training on I'm gonna have to I'm exploring that more to see like if I will actually have training sessions for things or how I will handle it I'm hoping kind of develop some of these things like the hallway heroes for example I'd like to make that into like a core like the hallway hero core and these people are all part of the core of hallway heroes and we have like a big powwow every now and then about being a part of the schools and being in there so as it goes I'm, I'm hoping it grows and becomes bigger and is, is an impact on our whole community and, and then strengths and strengthens the partnership between all of us this is a wonderful partnership and I'm thank, thank you for all your work yeah. um, I guess I have one more question sorry <laughs> so if a teacher wanted someone with with who is an engineer say or, or knew how to make styrene or something then they could just ask and then tell yes. chemical if they hopefully had they'll call me and say Renee we're looking for a guest speaker on such and such a topic and then I have guest speaker as one of the jobs listed so hopefully um, I I would filter it out to guest speakers and find out someone who put down that as a skill or as a job or something they could talk about because that's a part of the filtering and then I could give that person a phone call and ask them or give it to the teacher if they would prefer to contact them okay so everything from really specific needs to even concessions is that what you're looking yes, for sport, yeah we have sports concessions on there yeah okay. and it can and we can make that list bigger I've already you know talked to a couple people that we thought oh we should put that on there oh we should put that on there so I see that growing great great thank you do, do you see a link with other organizations in the community now that you have this database? Because I know one thing that sometimes comes up is you go to do something in a different organization outside of the school and you have to fill out, you know, other paperwork, you know, to be vetted through another organization. Is there any thought that eventually, you know, this database could be used in other organizations? I hope it can be. And maybe Andy can chime in on that one. I'm not sure. Explore that because this is so new. Mm -hmm. but, I mean, Okay, I just thought because that would be really nice if we just had one and so I think that was one of the questions that was on the questionnaire was are you volunteering just for Midland Public Schools or are you volunteering for United Way um, yeah, that's in addition two questions on there the one the first question is um, are you going to be a volunteer for Midland Public Schools which actually defaults to yes at this point um, because the people that go to that page that's what they're going to do um, but then the second question asking if they would like to volunteer for United Way, which actually we, you know, you have that option in that way. If we have something coming up, we can contact people for that. I just make a comment. For one thing, Renee's terrific for this job. I've known Re Renee for years, but I'm really okay. excited about this. And um, because for years people have volunteered, and I, I think one of the biggest disappointments is, is when they volunteer and they're excited and then they're not contacted or they you know they don't get used or we don't know what skills and talents are out there and there's a lot so well I just talked to a middle school parent the other day who I asked her if she was gonna volunteer because her kids aren't in elementary anymore and she says oh well they don't really need us in middle school I said oh actually we do so I'll let you know what you could possibly volunteer with really really appreciate you being being out at those locations when parents are coming mm -hmm. in for 
uh, registering their kids or that pick up the schedule because that's really going to give you a lot of uh, uh, room for, to get some more people on board. Oh yeah, yeah, it's it's tough doing the hurdle. So I'm the one whose license expired, and you caught that. <laughs> so. I've already submitted twice. <laughs> You're good. You're approved. You're in there. can't do it alone so it's wonderful yeah, to have your partnership that's right it's a team effort yeah all right any other questions or comments very impressive i yeah. appreciate all the work and effort to come into it and don't forget dow uh, dow chemical financially yeah. supporting yeah, definitely yeah. Yeah. yeah thank you to dow and are you located in this building or at the united way building i'm actually in both yes. buildings oh okay because <laughs> i know i think the address on it was the united <laughs> way building but you made some reference to here so okay yep Okay. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, you very much. Thank you both. All right, moving into item 3.2, which is 2017 scholarships presented to MPS students. Always a point of pride for our district. Cindy's going to put them up on the, uh, a slide up with all of them there. And while she's doing that, I'll, I'll say that um, our students this year awarded $14.7 million, or offered $14.7 million in scholarships. Um, obviously, we have a lot of high achieving students, that's part of it, but we also have an incredibly generous community, and uh, um, many of these, these are our local ones that are supported by local people. Um, the names on these, we, you know, we're going to briefly go through this, but the names will be scrolled left to this meeting on the TV as well as we post it on our website, so you can look at those names and the many students that are recognized there by our local generosity. Congratulations to all the students, and good luck to all the students heading off to college here in the next few weeks. A big thank you to all those donors who start these scholarship funds and the Midland Area Community Foundation who really um, helps make that happen. Yeah, it's amazing when you look, read through the list of all the different ones. It's just unbelievable. Yes, certainly is. All right, moving. Moving into item four, which is request to address the board. Do we have anyone tonight who would like to address the board? All right. Seeing none, we will move into item five, which is FFO. And I will... Patrick, you yep, were there. That's me. <clears throat> I have a... Report. Are you reading them or are you... I can. Would you like me to read them? Well, you weren't there. I was not there. So <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, but you read them. It doesn't matter. Them. You can pass them to either person. And okay. <laughs> Mary? Pat's sure. left. All right. So I was Patrick in his absence. There you go. That works. <laughs> um, Daryl Dumbro from uh, Barton Milo was there. And he uh, reviewed and discussed with the committee the status of the current construction projects and completion times across the district. This included um, Plymouth and Woodcrest renovations and additions secure entrances to each of the buildings, uh, Central Auditorium, and the final stages at Central Park Elementary. Facilities, Mr. Cooper reviewed current information regarding the recent outage and the restoration work at Dow High School. This included future work on the building transformer. Uh, the floor, flooring replacement at Midland High due to the recent water issues was reviewed due to the availability of flooring materials from the manufacturers, all work will not be completed by the beginning of the school, um, school year. As the materials arrive, the installers will work around the school schedule, including working on weekends. A brief discussion was held regarding the selling of school property. It will be a topic of discussion at the September FFO meeting. 
Finance, the draft of the recently completed audit for the 2016-17 was briefly shared along with the status of the fund balance. The full complete audit will be shared in September with the FFO committee and the full board. The committee discussed the current district policy for purchasing in comparison to other Michigan districts. Most districts use the state statute and limit as the basis for competitive bill bids and board approval. The committee asked Mr. Cooper to bring back data to show how a change might affect what the board is asked to approve based on differing dollar limits. The next FFO meeting is Monday, September 11th at 5 p.m. Thank you. All right, moving into 5.2, Bob. Yeah, uh, today just informational. This is five items, uh, gifts, uh, totaling $4,516. You'll see the uh, vast majority of this is for the Dalai Wrestling, which I think behind this, uh, they're trying to raise money for new mat, mm -hmm. and they're going at it a couple different ways. And so you're seeing what some of the uh, generous public has given so far there. And the other part was for uh, music lockers at Dow High. Um, that was uh, something that we did uh, so much out of the general fund, and there was a little bit left over that they uh, gladly picked up, and that's for just the increased number of kids they have uh, coming over for the music program. All right, thank you. Moving into item six, Mike. We have a number of um, memorials. This one, so I'll work through those. So, rough month, month for former MPS employees or board members. Dr. David Cullum, who passed away on June 21st, 2017. Dr. Cullum was an MPS Board of Education member for 12 years, 1973 to 85. He served as president, secretary, and trustee during his time on the MPS board. This is Dorothy Retzloff, who passed away on July 19th, 2017. Mrs. Retzloff was a bus driver in the transportation department for 16 years, retiring in 1984. Mrs. Norma Schneider, who passed away on July 30th, 2017. Mrs. Schneider worked for MPS for 18 years as an elementary teacher at Plymouth Elementary and an administrative assistant at Northeast Intermediate School, retiring in 1979. Mr. Stephen Sears, who passed away on July 28th, 2017. Mr. Sears was a bus driver in the transportation department for six years, retiring in 2011. Mrs. Florence Droter, hopefully I'm pronouncing that correct. Drotter, who passed away on August 5th, 2017. Mrs. Drotter was a first and third grade teacher at Plymouth Elementary School for 32 years, retiring in 1988. So we extend our sympathy to their families. All right, thank you. All right, <coughs> item seven is correspondence to and from the Board of Education. Item eight is scheduled activities. So note that our next regularly scheduled board meeting will be September 18th. And at this time, we will move into our study discussion session. I will start with you, Lynn. All righty. I was just going to comment um, on Dr. David Kellum. For years, he sat in the front row here he did, yes. and um, came to our board meetings and was a, continued to be a very active community member. So we, he will be missed. Um, welcome to our new teachers. And also wanted to comment on um, the neighborhood revitalization that just occurred through Habitat for Humanity. The uh, headquarters was at our Parkdale um, land space, and um, the revitalization took uh, place around Midland High School. So it was kind of neat to be in the neighborhood. But also, we had a couple of our gentlemen that are with Barton Mallow volunteered on a house as well. So Rick was running back and forth between a house on Haley, I believe, and. Central Park and I thought it was just a neat, neat representation of um, that company working in the community with our schools and, um, and along with all the other people in our, in our school district. So thank you to all that participated in that and um, thank you again to Ann and Renee and Dow. I'm just really excited to see this volunteer program kick off and uh, I know that they, they're excited as well. Beginning of school starting. I know people don't like to necessarily talk about it, but um, enjoy the rest of the time the next couple of weeks and be safe as we uh, utilize our bus buses and our new entrances and new, new school. I'm excited about that and all that's going on. I bopped into Northeast one day and uh, saw the whole new 
from the new front. It's just amazing what they did with making that new entrance. So, and that's all I have. Brad. I would also like to thank uh, Anne and Renee for their presentation on the United for Success. And um, thank you again to Dow Chemical. Mm -hmm. And sorry that Mr. Valentine wasn't here, so we could thank him personally. But I will thank him the next time I see him. Thanks again, Dow Chemical. Thanks. Yeah. Great. <clears throat> Today I went through um, Plymouth, Woodcrest, and Central Auditorium. And when I walked through Plymouth and Woodcrest and into that new gymnasium cafeteria space, it took my breath away. It was just, it's going to be a great addition for the kids going to those schools. Uh, I know we've been talking a lot about Central Park Elementary, but uh, wow, what, what, um, a great school for, for these kids as well to move forward. It's exciting to see what's happening at our elementary schools for sure. Um, another thing I wanted to do is thank the board for uh, the generous contribution of wonderful books in my dad's name. I, we lost my dad in June, so I really appreciate your support. That's been very nice. <clears throat> I guess uh, the final thing is a little bit about the FFO meeting. We talked about the audit, and it looks like the fund balance is approximately 16%, and I think that's important that we stay around that 16% mark um, with the age of the schools and the vehicles and uh, still playing catch up. I think it's real important that we keep that as a goal. That's all I have to add. Patrick. I don't have much that's already been said, but I, I do appreciate United Way and Dow Chemicals efforts that that program. I've been volunteering myself the last couple of years with my kids, and I it seems like we have more people in this community who would volunteer had they had an avenue. So this is great to see mm -hmm. we'll have this chance to do it. And just good luck to all the new teachers and kids as they go back to school here in the next few weeks. Great. The volunteering application is super simple. So you know, and and um, Renee is there to help. If, if you need help. So I would encourage people to take the time to do that. It's going to be a blast. I'm so looking forward to it. Um, being back in the classroom, um, I wanted to um, commend the city, too. Um, they, they are partnering so well with our, our school in keeping our students safe. The improvements that they're making to the sidewalks, and um, they've put in a signal light by Central Park so that it'll be safer for kids crossing, and um, a, uh, a special accommodations to the work crews that are working so diligently and making those improvements in the schools. Plymouth's new window walls on all those classrooms is just, and the air conditioning in those rooms will be just uh, state of the art that those kids are going to be comfortable in there and that's going to make learning so much easier for them. Um, I did want to, Pam had addressed about the fund balance and it's important when you think about the, the costs that are incurred in like the mishap there at Dow High with um, power, major power lines and I'm no electrician but um, and the, the need for a transformer in the future and the cost in, that can be incurred in just a, a moment's notice. And um, a lot of the infrastructures within our buildings are, are getting old and need to be examined and, and to make sure that we have the money available for just those kinds of mishaps. That's really important. All right, thanks. I had a few things. One. Um, Another partnership that's going on, um, the Legacy Center is actually right now um, offering and talking to all um, sports teams, fall sports teams in Midland Public Schools um, about opiate addiction. And so it's an optional thing. Students don't, you know, athletes don't have to go, but they are offering that. My daughter went, it must have been last week, and she said, yeah, I actually learned some stuff, Mom. And they actually had someone speak who has been impacted by it. So pretty impactful for that and I appreciate that partnership that they're coming in to do that. Um, thanks to everyone involved uh, with all the Dow High electrical work. I know that was um, a challenge um, to figure all that out. Um, note the our schools insert, I can't remember what day it was in, was it in the mm -hmm. weekend? The yes. weekend paper. Um, some good articles in here, one especially is about our new PATHS program. 
It was a very interesting read, and it sounds like that's um, going very well, showing a lot of interest in that. Um, I noticed the city of Midland actually got to take a tour of Central, and it posted that out on Facebook. And there was a lot of good, positive feedback, and a lot of people wondering, like, when can I go? And then I noticed um, in today's Monday communique that there is going to be a public open house um, near the end of September. So anyone who's interested, keep an eye open for that. That'll be exciting, because I know a lot of people drive by it, they see it, and they really want to see what's inside of it. So that's great that we're offering that. Um, and other than that, that's all I had for tonight. I'll turn it over to you, Mike. Speaking of partnerships, we spoke of a bunch tonight, right? Yes. Amazing community we have. Um, Dow is supporting us in another way. So they um, are very excited about what we believe to be the effect of Central Park already and how it's uh, maybe changing the dynamics of that neighborhood and the opportunities for those kids going forward. So Dow has put up some dollars and we are partnering with Saginaw Valley State University. Brian and I meet with uh, a couple people from Saginaw Valley on Wednesday or Thursday. And uh, we will begin the discussion of a, a long-term study on the effects of Central Park in that community. And you can already kind of anecdotally hear that when you hear real estate agents talk about buying and um, those pieces of it, but also tracking these kids and wh what effect will that have as we go forward. So we're really excited about that because it also provides incredible data for us, mm -hmm. which we're going to need for our, our, our funders of that stuff going on there. So that was a great, um, another great partnership. And if you see Rob on that one too, Rob was a big piece of that as well. So he's been a great partner for us. Um, early enrollment numbers, and I say early, enrollment's so fluid. We pulled it again today, and it's changed a little bit. In fact, by the time I got back before the board meeting, it changed just a little bit from this earlier this afternoon. Um, they wanted to update me, but it, it looks good. And so um, we do still expect the decline small, but remember the uh, number we budgeted, we're going to be probably pretty safe at that number. Um, but of course, still. You know, good two three weeks before we know kind of what that is, and then we don't certify until uh, almost November fall count. So a long ways on enrollment, but it's looking very good. And those elementary numbers are um, pretty positive going down the road, where we're getting a lot of students and a lot of parents choosing us without a doubt. Um, we're doing the right things on, on choice for parents. Um, a couple anecdotal pieces at Central Park. It's opening at capacity. At one time, it wasn't quite capacity. It's fully at capacity already, so that, that's, that's outstanding. worked. And we're going to push 800 <clears throat> students in there. We really, we were saying capacity 780, so we got to be careful. We don't overdo it. Um, the high schools, ironically, um, watching them, they are dead even in, in enrollment. So we knew that was kind of coming, something we need to keep our eye on and watch what's going on a little bit there. Um, and same with our middle school, it's about that even um, split across town right now. So we'll have to continue to watch those numbers as we go. If I take our elementary or our kindergarten enrollment and I add the young fives in there, the positive of that is it might be one of our largest kindergarten classes ever. And so, or I should say in recent years, not ever. I'm <laughs> correct wow. myself on that. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, very, very, yeah. <laughs> very good numbers there. You mentioned past program. Uh, somebody did tonight and um, an update from Jeff and I'll send it on to you guys um, I think he's at 30 students are already enrolled wow. if others interested he's, he's had them out to some of the partnerships we were hoping to grow um, with the ABC, ABC and the, the building out there so our students are partaking in some of the CTE stuff which we thought kind of would fit as well with the online and blend out pieces of that so we're, we're kind of excited we're we weren't really expecting that right away. We are expecting to get there. So that's a positive as we go forward. Another need that was needed that maybe we're reaching out and needing parents or kids' choice of what they need. I wrote to you a little bit about lacrosse. The growth of lacrosse has been evident. And I think since the day I've been here, I've been watching it. I always say be careful when you uh, club sport something because the odds are you're going to take it on one day. It's time to take it on. Um, us sponsor it, us to get school control over that a little bit as well. Um, we met with the the leaders, I think, uh, of the group, um, and they were they were positive. And our ads and Janet is now working on the full plan of that. And we'll bring that back to you. But we're going to take lacrosse on this this school year. Uh, we spoke last time about Jefferson Pool. A lot of interest in Jefferson Pool out there, especially as we approach uh, fall swim seasons and a lack of. Uh, pool space out there. Um, a lot of people who would like to raise that 250-ish, and I'm using a 
ballpark number there, estimate, um, um, to fix that pool. I don't know if that would be my recommendation, but I certainly, you know, won't block the community. Um, I've been working on um, getting ready for a community conversation on that, bring all the users of the area of pools involved in that together. Um, looks like mid to late September, we're waiting for our pool consultant to give us a full report or maybe even try to get him there at that meeting to talk about is that 250 a wise wise um, investment if you recall um, before my time you had one done a study of the pools and that time they said the consultants said they weren't worth money putting money into and we have put money into it even though the community foundation now runs and operates our pool so we kind of our hands off um, the agreement evidently when you did that was we were giving them ten thousand dollars a year and then they would rerun and operate those pools um, we've kind of reduced that to five recently is it and the community center that excuse me community center I, I thank you for correcting me on that um, the community center and um, so they're, they're every bit of a partner in this, even though it's our facility, they're operating it, and it's had long-term effects on them. So we've been in conversation with them, and they'll be a big piece of that conversation. I reached out to some other um, important people in the community today about pools, and the conversation is of should we be talking about a, a, a new pool, or where should we go as a community? And I'll tell you, I don't think those out there are that interested in that. And so. Um, that could pose a little bit of an issue for us because somebody looked to us still as the pool operators, but we're, we cannot be pool operators anymore. And I explain to people all the time what's really changed why schools don't operate pools anymore is years ago, when the prior proposal A, when you needed money to do all the things you did, you went to your local community and you said, hey, we need to pass five mills and this will operate the school and it'll look like this capacity. So you could take on things if the community was willing to support that. We don't have the option of taxing our community that way anymore. That's not part of law. We can't do that. We have the enhancement of pill, millage piece as a county, mm -hmm. and we have the whole harmless, which is just goes to Lansing for your head count and then comes back. Most of it comes back to us. Um, so we have really no option to raise funds to operate. Mm -hmm. We can raise funds through a bond to build, but we right. can't through operate. And I wouldn't advise that right now either after we just passed up one to replenish our facility. So it's kind of a bind and pull. We got some issues there to really discuss. It's probably not going to be the most popular because I think many are going to want the school to take that on. I think we're just one piece of many people looking at the pool piece as we go forward. So I think that's a big discussion that we're prepping ourselves with all the information to have in September with our community on that piece of it. Last week, I think Brian and Janet's heads are spinning because we got notified last week very late that we weren't expecting that um, we're going to get granted, um, correct me if I said this wrong, 16 seats, Brian? 32 slots. 32 slots, which equals 16. So you can do half day program or full day. The state is very close to making you go full day. You might as well do full day. Uh, it's easier on parents um, as well. But a great start readiness program. And so we are going to get that up and running on a, on a run because there's a lot of work to actually do that with certifications of our facilities. <coughs> right now we have chosen Plymouth, which I wrote to you that was Chestnut Hill and Plymouth. Plymouth is closer to a bathroom. Our bathroom's in the facility. That's all important for licensing mm -hmm. with those young children. Um, so we're going to get up and going. That's, that's a very positive for us. Um, At-risk children getting into school early with a high-quality teacher and a high-quality curriculum. And I'm very, and I'll emphasize that again, probably because I have a spouse that does it, but a high-quality teacher <laughs> and a high-quality curriculum because not all preschool programs have that. And so that there can pay, pay some really long term dividends. And that Great Start Ready this program that was called Other Things Before has great research to show, when I say long term, less students getting incarcerated, more graduating from college, most choosing high level technical programs. You know, all those things long term, not just test scores for the next four or five years, but long term effects. And so this is a start. I think it also forces us to move along the plan that I was a little hesitant to do fast. We're going to probably have to look at the lower elementary side of Carpenter for our early childhood programs as we've grown and taken space from our elementaries and our enrollment has stayed high at those elementaries. Mm -hmm. I think we're going to have to look at that over there and move four or five different pieces in there. That will take a little bit of a, it's a break even I think in all these programs as, as we have broke even with our pre preschool programs. But I think at some point we might have to invest a few dollars to address that wing up over there, paint, carpet, you know, nothing severe, but make it look, you know, new, because we kind of didn't do anything we know we were closing it. Yeah. And then um, at some point, there will also be either 
I don't know if it'll pay for itself if we have to or not, but I think we'll be required to add some kind of formal director that's required by law when you put all those programs mm -hmm. under something together. So a lot to work out, but we'll get the GSRP up and running and then we'll begin early this year, look at Carpenter and potentially moving some of those programs over there next year as we grow. And, and I'm gonna expect if we do a good job at GSRP, we're gonna get more slots down the road mm -hmm. as well. Center Park public showing, um, you know, we've been planning that for a while. We kind of want to get the fill facility up before you actually invite the public in and have a disaster on that first day. Um, so we have two coming up. Monday, September 25th, we're going to do from 6 to 7.30, open to the public. We really don't know, there's a little dangers that, but think of like an open house real estate agents have. You come in, you get a little introduction to the house or some literature. We're going to do a video that they'll watch and hand out a small piece of literature, and they'll have people post it throughout the facility as they roam and to talk about the facility. I think if they went in just generically without an explanation of what we did, why we did, they would mm -hmm. miss some stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, why'd they leave that beam exposed and why'd they do some of those things, right? And so we need to be able to explain that as well as we go through. Um, and then October 13, we're going to call that kind of like a, a VIP or a invite there. Um, uh, and that is, um, we're reviewing the final planning of that tomorrow morning. Um, but we have that up and I'll send you that criteria. But it's, uh, it's and I'm not going to release all the names to you right now, but we have some pretty significant names coming to the View Center Park on that day um, as well. And if you think of others that need to be listed on that day, let me know because that can happen as well. Um, auditorium. Um, so Thursday we're going to walk over and decide if we can have opening day at breakfast at Central Park and come over and have our opening um, day where you know I speak very briefly, not my favorite thing to do, and I'll hand over to our speaker to come in and speak to our staff. Um, I'd love to have it, not so much to show off the auditorium, but I want the, all of our staff to see what Central Park is and what we're going to try to accomplish at Woodcrest and Plymouth and then all the elementaries the following year and then the middle school and high school and our facilities. As been, has been scheduled all the way through, there's some discussion in the community that we're behind. We're ahead of schedule and I think some people forgot that there was a schedule. Mm -hmm. They all thought all the projects were going to happen at once. Never was the case and it's always been a plan of a six, seven year plan on how to do these things. I can go more detail on it, but I think you guys know mm -hmm. that. Um, but we want to show that all off, and we'll find out on that day if we can do so. Daryl kind of um, didn't want to show off their work until it was completed. You know how that is. You don't want to, Brad probably doesn't want someone to go in and see his electrical work until it's completed. And you know, during the work phase, I understand that, but I think we can do it safely in there. It just, there's two pieces that are probably aren't going to be done yet, so the curtains aren't here yet. Well, that, that would have worked if we had the orchestra shell up the, for the background, but it's not going to be here either. But I'm okay with that. If I explain to everyone, it's still under work. Here's the start to the, here's more things to come. So uh, we'll see if Daryl lets me talk him into that. And then we'll announce on Thursday evening if opening day's in there. But if you don't make it to opening day, the first big um, performance in there is Project 111, which is our distracted driving program in our community. Um, working in our high schools and has for at least two or three years, huh, Mary? Mm -hmm. um, and distracted driving, how relevant today, right? Mm -hmm. uh, perfect timing of this. And um, they ha need to do some fundraising, and so they're going to have a concert. If you know Sarah Shriver, um, I guess she's quite the artist. I didn't really know that about her. Even though she's my neighbor, I, don't, I discovered that. And so she's going to hold a concert with some others in there, and that's September 23. I, I, Cindy was gone last week, and of all times for me to send out a link to you guys, hopefully you got that link and I did it right. I'm not <laughs> positive, so, okay. Um, but hopefully you take advantage of that and come see the facility as well as support Project 111. So three pieces of um, showing off our facilities. And I believe that's all I have for you. Great. Thank you. Well, at this time, we will end the meeting. Thank you, everybody, for coming.